Thanks for tuning in to the Reach Church podcast. We're currently in our message series, Anchored. Here's this week's message from Pastor Chris Gilkey. Happy fourth weekend. I hope you've enjoyed it as we have and hope you've got to set off some boom. I know it's a little bit sketchy here in Texas, but last night we found a place to go blow some stuff up and I was a happy camper until a young man that was with us from the Navy and I love the Navy. Thank God for the Navy. Couldn't be a Marine without the Navy, but the Navy's not used to handling explosives and well, he dropped, you know, one of those, uh, those balls that you put into the tubes that shoot it. Yeah, the mortars. He, he lit one and threw it down in the middle of us because he didn't realize what it was supposed to do. He thought it was supposed to go bang. So I had an exciting night, had a good adrenaline pumping, ready for this morning, you know, just enjoying the freedom that we had. But it is honestly, it's an awesome, awesome thing that we get to celebrate the 4th of July here in America, honoring the freedom that our nation has in so many different ways and, and those that have fought before us to be able to get that freedom to us and like that video said this is an inheritance but we've got to continue to build the inheritance and I want to encourage you guys that I don't know whatever it is that you are seeing happening whether it is from politicians to courtrooms to to social society whether it's ethical decisions that are being made no matter what is taking place In our society today, the last time I checked, this is still the land of the free and the home of the brave. And we can celebrate with that freedom still to this day, and I'm thankful for it. And as we're going to kick into this series that we launched five weeks ago called Anchored, I want to just encourage you guys in this, and and this is something that's just so so deep within my heart today that I'm going to really, we got some points to talk about, but I'm going to share an awful lot from my heart because right now our nation is in a very troubled time. We have never been as divided, I believe, except since the Civil War. We are facing a lot of turmoil from the whether it's political views to whether it's courthouse decisions. No matter what those decisions are, no matter what those views are, no matter what that pressure is, we have something that we can be and should be anchored into that keeps us from being shaken when all else is shaken. Jesus gave us that promise. That which can be shaken will be shaken. But that which the fruit that's supposed to remain, it will remain. And so I just want to encourage you guys in this series, I, we launched it five weeks ago, and I started off, and I said something very specific five weeks ago that I have been sensing and feeling. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I couldn't put my thumb on it. I couldn't declare exactly what it is. But I started this series off with something like this, that there is a storm upon us, and that storm is going to continue to rage. And if we're not properly anchored, into what we should be and need to be anchored into, the next thing you know, we'll be taken out adrift into the midst of that storm. That there's a storm coming upon, an attack coming upon the church of America. The belief systems, the morality of what we know this nation has been founded on and what it has stood so true on for so many years. That this attack that is coming is going to be unlike anything else we have enjoyed in America The freedom of our religion, of our belief system, of our faith system without any worry of backlash from any kind because the truth is by the masses, Christians were were here developing and founding America and by the masses, American is considered to be a Christian nation. But those times are changing. Morality is falling at an ever-precedented rate. Decisions are being made that will affect a lot of the outcome of the spiritual aptitude for which we live in in the hour we live in today. And what do we do as believers? Where do we stand? How do we stay anchored? What do we stay anchored into? And and that's so critical for each and every one of us to have a clear understanding. So this series, we're going to stay on it. 
We're going to stick with it for the rest of this month of July because there's nothing more important right now for each and every one of us uh, as to understanding what it is that we are to be anchored to. And we kick this off with the understanding of this, that if I'm going to anchor myself to something, I don't want to anchor myself into social society. I don't want to anchor myself into, into what pop culture is saying is cool and relevant today. I don't want to anchor myself into even what a politician or a courthouse would say. Because all I'm doing by doing that is I'm anchoring myself into temporal things. People that will die, decisions that will be changed or overruled at some point in our history. So what I don't want to do is anchor myself in to something that is temporal. I want to anchor myself in to something that is eternal. And Jesus gave us his promise that both heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass pass away. So that's where we find the true rock to anchor into is God's holy word. God gave us his word. This was the foundation scripture for the series. He said, I've given you my word, my promise, and I've taken an oath on my word that I've given you that I'll never change it. That's the beautiful thing about God's word. We don't have to worry about all of a sudden one day some elect of the religious society coming together and saying, well, I know that's in the Bible, yet that's not for our time today. We understand that God's Word is holy, God's Word is pure, and God's Word has stood the test of time. And God's Word, according to John 1, 1, is Jesus Himself. That He is the Word, and He has been with us always, and He has been here Always, and he will always be here. So when we anchor in, we want to anchor in to God's word so that we will not be shaken by anything that is happening around us. And that's where we're going to continue to expound on today is I want to talk about because today what is up for discussion in our society today is one word, and that word is truth. And here's society's take today. Well, your truth is your truth, and my truth is mine, and their truth is theirs. And if they want to believe that we were created from the left shoelace of our ancient ancestors, then that's their truth. No, that's their lie. That's their deception. There has to be, hear me now, if there is no such thing as a truth, then nobody really has truth at all. Are you hearing this? If we say, let me reword it. If we say that this is true, and well, if if you believe that, that's your truth. And if I believe this, that's my truth. And if they believe that, well, that's their truth. Just leave them be, that's their truth. If everybody's got different truths, it means everybody's a liar. Are you hearing me? Because if everybody's got a different truth, then it means it's conflicting stories. And how in the world can we determine what is and what is not true? And that's what we talked about with this series. I don't want to anchor my life into something that is going to change. I want to anchor my soul, the Bible says. I want to anchor my soul into Jesus. Why? Because my mind, my will, my emotion, how I think, how I feel, and what I desire, I don't need it to be attached to ever-changing society. What I want it to be attached to something that never changes. And God's given us this promise that he's never going to change. So when I anchor myself into Jesus, I don't have to worry about, okay, if I feel a certain way about something, then I need to line myself up with how does God feel about it. If I need to know what to think about something, what I want to do is align myself with what does God think about it. If I'm going to desire something, I better align those desires up with God's desires. Are you hearing this? When I do that, that has anchored my soul into Jesus. So today what I want to really talk about is what is truth? Is truth just whatever you believe? Is that really just your truth? Is Their truth, really just their truth. Because if everybody's got a different truth, everybody is either deceived or they're liars. There can only be one truth. 
And truth is really not a what. And that's our number one for today. Truth is not a what. Truth is a who. John 14, 6, Jesus told him, I am. Remember those words? Who shall I say sent me? Tell him I am sent you. What did Jesus say? I am that I am. I've always been before the days of Abraham. I am. So Jesus says, I am eternal, the way. There is no other way. There is no other halfway. There's no other three-quarters way. Jesus wasn't mincing words. Jesus wasn't leaving any room for doubt or confusion as to how to get to heaven for eternity. He said, I am the way. And then he says, I am the truth. So anything that lines itself up with Jesus is truth. And anything that lines itself up against Jesus is a lie because there's only one truth and that truth is not a what that truth is a who and his name is Jesus he is the son of God the word of God and he is the life so Jesus said I am the way I am the truth and I am the life no one can come to the father except through me does that sound confusing that's pretty clear cut yes so he is telling us I am the truth. My truth is not a what. My truth is a who. And here's what we're looking at today. We're looking at everybody lining up on different sides and everybody declaring that they think they have the truth. But yet what I hear very little of is people relying on something that has been around a lot longer than they have. Someone who is eternal and not temporal because that is what Jesus came to set us up to be able to do. I don't have to worry about. I don't have to worry about being confused because I've got a book. I've got a book that tells me the truth. Even if I don't understand it, even if it rubs me the wrong way at times, it's truth. How is our little finite minds, uh, 20, 30, 50, 60, maybe 80 years old? Wow, you lived 80 years. That's awesome. Compared to what? Compared to this nation's age, you've lived very little compared to the 300 years that America's been around. But let's talk about the European nations that have been around thousands of years and the Middle Eastern that have been around five, 6,000 documented years. And look at that in comparison to how long the earth has been in existence. And then when you compare that to how long Jesus has been in existence. Yeah. So here's what we got. We got a lot of smart people that think they're so smart they've become stupid, yeah. making a lot of decisions right now to affect the greater whole of our humanity and our freedoms and our country. And we have a lot of this happening because they think that they have the truth. Yeah. But what are they lining their truth up with? This is what you need to ask yourself. What are we aligning our truth up with because if I align my truth up with whatever I feel like it then that means it's really not truth because that's going to change and truth never changes but here's what truth does number two truth brings freedom true freedom John 8 32 Jesus said and you will know you will deeply understand you will have a revelation Of the truth. And that truth will set you free. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Set me free from what? The truth will set me free from confusion. The truth will set me free from intimidation. The truth will set me free from lies and manipulation. The truth will set me free from sin. The truth will set me free from fear. The truth will set me free from whatever it is that's trying to compound my soul and contort me to do something that is not destined for me to do. So my truth can't just be my truth. And your truth can't just be your truth. Truth has to have a center. Truth has to have a standard. Truth has to have something to line itself up with. And for 6,000 years, God has given us His holy 
word, yeah. and it has stood the test of time to be true. Yeah. Prophecies spoken 6,000 years ago coming to pass today. Prophecies spoken 5,000 years ago coming to pass 2,000 years ago. God's holy word has never changed, and God's word has stood the test of time to be true. Historians use it. Archaeologists use it. Where the Bible says it happened at, they go and they go to that place and they find the evidence that it happened right here. So God's word has been given to us to be our standard of truth. Because God's word is Jesus. And Jesus, he is the truth. And this freedom, I don't have to worry about decisions that are being made. Hear this clearly. I don't have to worry about being intimidated. Well, the next thing they're going to do is they're going to come after freedom of religion. Let them come after it. The next thing they're going to do, well, you don't know, but the next thing they're going to do is take away the church's tax-exempt status. Take it. I've not come for any of those things. What I have come to do is declare the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I always have. I always will. And that's what this church is being built on is the truth. I don't have to fear anything. I don't have to be intimidated by anybody. I don't have to stress out or worry or get myself, my, my panties all bunched up in a wad, right? Can I say that? I said it. If I can't, forgive me. It's 4th of July. I fought for your freedom 10 years. Give me a pass. Okay? Anything, listen to this. If we say, well, I believe in the Bible, but. Well, I know the Bible's God's word, but. If you say anything like that, you might as well take your head and shove it right up your. But, right? You gave me a free pass. I'm taking advantage of it. I'm sorry. But hear this. Psychologically, proven this. If you say, I, da, 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 but, whenever you say the word but in a conversation, what it truly means is your subconscious is kicking in and you're telling your conscience, you know what, that's all garbage, here's what I really believe. So if I say, well, I know the, the Bible's God's word, but I don't believe it's relevant for today, or I'm not, what you're really saying is that I don't believe it's God's holy word. Good. Are you hearing this? Yeah. There are lines being drawn. There's a line being drawn in the sand. And some people are freaked out about it. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm thankful for it. Because you know what it's going to do? It's going to weed out the lukewarm, the country club Christians. It's going to make people make a decision to stand for what they believe. And I love that. Because I never joined this fight to sit on the sidelines. I joined the fight, this spiritual war. I joined it to be a vessel of honor set apart, ready to be used by him for his faithful work to be done in this earth. The line's been drawn, and it'll continue to get deeper and wider. And we are going to have to make a decision as a believer. We've already made a decision as research. You should know that. I declared that five weeks ago when I declared it still stands true today. No compromise. There will be none. We don't have to compromise to show compassion. We'll never judge, criticize, or hurt anyone that is lost. We love them. Jesus gave his life for them just like he gave us life when we were once lost, but now we are saved. So I'm never, ever going to be a part of some snooty religious organization that thinks we're better than those that surround us. What I know this is, though, we have it better. We're not better, but we have it better because we have the truth. We have the light living inside of us. And in these times when the darkness is surrounding us, what a beautiful opportunity it is for the church to be the city. Set on the side of the hill that can't be hid. The lamp that is placed on top of the basket to burn bright for those that are lost in darkness. This is our call. This is our commission. And number three, freedom is a conditional response to an inward change. So truth is not a what, it's a who. And that's Jesus. And truth brings freedom. 
And freedom is the conditional response to prove that you've really experienced the Son himself. John 8, 36. So if the Son, Jesus, sets you free, then you are truly free. You know what this means? This is how simple it is. If you get bound up by fear or intimidation of what is society going to, are you going to be cool now because you're a Christian? Who gives a rip if you're cool? Are you going to be relevant? Who gives a rip if you're relevant? I mean, I'm not going back and wearing sandals and burlap. I don't, you know, do you follow what I'm saying? It's like all of a sudden we're not thrown back to the Stone Ages because we're going to take a stand for the truth. How cool do you got to be? You see what cool gets you. Turned inside out, flipped inside out. Are you hearing this? If you have been changed on the inside, if the Son of God has entered your heart, He has set you free. And if you're free, you're truly free. In other words, it's like this. If I have Jesus in my heart, I know I have Jesus in my heart because I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not saying that I don't get a, a sense of intimidation from this or that. What it means is this. I'm not going to lose my faith because of a decision that's made or because of an agenda that's pushed. I'm not going to lose my faith because of what society thinks of me being a Christian because I'm free from all of that. I'm free from that intimidation. I'm free from that peer pressure. I'm free from it because I know that Jesus has set me free. Are y'all here? Yeah. This is the message for right now, for today, for our hour. I implore you from the depths of my heart, don't back down. Don't pick fights. Don't be obnoxious. Don't be weird. But do not back down from your faith. Do not back down from your Savior. He gave everything for you. And the only thing that he asks us is to never deny him on this earth. He knows we won't be perfect. He knows we're going to screw up. He knows we're going to fall short. He knows that we are fallible and that it is impossible for us to be infallible until the day that we are with him. But here's what he also asks us. Just don't deny me. Because if you deny me on earth, I will deny you in heaven. But if you acknowledge me on earth, then I'll acknowledge you in heaven that's the beautiful message of Jesus he's given us this truth this freedom and guys I don't care what decisions are made in what courtrooms or what political offices I don't care what decision is made what can they do they want to take my freedom take it I'll preach in prison you want to take whatever take my life okay to to live is Christ, to die is gain. You're not taking anything. You're giving me eternity. Like in the end, I don't have anything to fear. This is our moment as a church to shine. This is our moment to be who we were created to be. This is our time. This is our season. This is it for us. And I'm so excited that I live in today's hour. Now I have purpose deeper than I really even imagined. And now, this Marine gets to fight spiritually like I once fought physically, but not for the freedom of a nation, but for the freedom of the Christ that lives in me to be able to take that freedom and give it to others because those who have freely been given should freely give. And that's the message that Jesus wants us focused on we're going to go into next week how do we navigate through this this season this hour that we're living in how do we stay anchored how do we do it we've been talking about the what and the why a lot but we're going to go into the how but i'm gonna give you a quick snippet really fast look at this how do i stay anchored because jesus already gave the antidote before there was a need he answered the question before it was even asked because here's the the cold hard facts. We are living in a, a troubled time, a, a time where our faith is under fire. Being an American once meant really just being a Christian. That's the way the world viewed it. If you go to Iran and you meet somebody, you automatically assume in your mind 
They're a Muslim. They're from a Muslim nation. This nation was founded by Christians. There's no other truth but that. Bottom line, they left England to come to here to have freedom of religion, and they were Christians. They were Puritans. They were literally the purest, most religious kind of sect of Christianity in England. And they came to establish a new nation. One nation under God. Not under Buddha, not under Allah, under God. Are you hearing me? This nation was founded as a Christian nation. But now the line is being drawn in the sand. And here's the truth. We're all going to have to choose a side. But what I implore you is choose the right side. Choose the winning side. Choose the side that matters for all of eternity and not the side that counts for the moment for you to look cool, you to look hip, you to look in, you to look relevant in your society. Jesus never told the church to fit in. He told you to stand out. Stand out like a light that can't be hid. So I want to encourage you guys with this. Here's what Jesus told us to focus on is this. Get on first base first. I used to play baseball. I come up to the plate and every single time I try to hit a home run. And I would strike out a whole lot more than I would make contact. Because I was trying to peel the, the skin off the ball every time. And my coach had to tell me, son, just focus on hitting the ball first. If you can get the first base, that's a good thing for us. If, can you imagine watching a football game and all they do is throw Hail Marys? It would be like watching the 80s Oakland Raiders play the 80s Oakland Raiders, right? All they do is Hail Marys. It would be, it would be crazy, it would be boring, and there wouldn't be a whole lot of points scored. It looked like soccer. We don't want football looking like soccer. All right? Here's what Jesus said. Don't focus on all the negativity. Don't focus on political decisions. Don't focus on courthouse decisions first. But first, seek his kingdom and his righteousness, his right standing, and he will give you everything you need. We're going to go into this next week because I'm believing God has positioned us for the greatest revival this nation has ever seen. The church that is. And that is this. If we stick to the basics, the fundamentals, if I put God's kingdom and his righteousness first, then God's going to be able to use my life to do unbelievable things in a very troubled and desperate time. Are you with me? I'm going to ask quickly if the ushers can come. They're going to be serving us with communion and I want to encourage each and every one of you as you receive the cup just hold on to it and we're going to receive it at the end of our prayer time but this is a amazing opportunity amazing time to take communion because taking communion it means this what you're saying is Jesus I want to come in to full unity with you and in, in the Chris Gilkey layman's terms Here's what it's saying. Jesus, I know you got my back, and I've got yours. I won't back down. I won't be shaken. I'm yours, and you're mine. And when we partake of communion, it's not a religious act. It's not a traditional thing that we do here at Reach Church. It's a spiritual moment where we are saying to Jesus, I am all yours, and all of you, I want to be mine. We are aligning ourselves up with Jesus himself. And I just want to encourage you guys as we do that, as we'll partake, partake here in just a moment, this is a critical moment in our nation, in our time, and in the church's history. The historical books, however long they may be written ago, or in the future, they will declare what we did with this time. God has trusted His church in America to be a light, to be salt, to be the flavor to the darkness and to the hurt and to the broken of this world. And I want to believe with everything in my heart that God will use us in such a dynamic fashion that we will
literally shape and change our nation and help bring it back to its foundation. Not by political rhetoric, that's nonsense, but by lifting up the holy blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ and not backing down from the religious or the political or the non-religious pressure that may come. I'm going to ask just for a moment we can bow our heads, close our eyes. Today we are faced with a decision. Each and every one of us are faced with a decision. What way would you choose? The Word of God says, choose you this day, either death or life. But I pray you choose life. Folks, I don't want to mince words. I'll cut right to it. There is one way to heaven. His name is Jesus. And there are many ways to hell, and there are all lies. If you need to rededicate your life, if you feel like your life is lukewarm right now, that you just have been living a stagnant Christian life, or you want to say yes to Jesus for the first time, without delay, without worry about anybody that's around you, on three, I want you to put your hand up in the air, and then we're going to pray a prayer with you right there in your seat. If that's you, put it up. One, two, three. Put it up. Be proud of it. Nice and high. Come on. Nice and high. Thank you. Hands are up all over. Hands are up all over. For each and every one of you that raise it hand, place it on your heart. And we're going to pray this prayer for all of us that are going to receive communion. The Bible says we should never receive communion with sin in our heart or we will feel the wrath and judgment of God himself. So let's all pray this prayer to our own two ears can hear it. Just say it like this. Say, Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Son of God. And now I ask you to forgive me of every sin, of every mistake I've ever made. I dedicate my life to you. And I'm asking you now for the strength to live my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of communion together. Once again, thanks for tuning in to the Reach Church podcast. For more information, visit reachchurch.com.